What's going on guys, Lomax here, and welcome back to my Battleborn character guide. Today's episode will be featuring Toby. So, Toby is the rogue defender, and he's probably the most adorable character in any game ever. He is a penguin with a robotic suit. And even while he's killing enemies, he still is inspiring his enemies, which I, I think is a really interesting character trait. He is recommended as an advanced character, which is interesting because I don't think he's super hard to play or to learn, but I can I can see like he might be you know, he might have a very high skill cap with his abilities, because I feel like if you play them a certain way you can be really, really good with them. Let's go ahead and get started with Toby's abilities. His passive, Boosters, allows you to jump in the air, and then you can hit the jump button again, and you'll get boosted in the direction you're traveling. Now, you have three charges to do this with. Each one recharges after eight seconds, and you can see the charges at the bottom of the screen. They'll be lit up if you have them, and they'll be refilling if you don't. Next, we have Toby's weapon, which is his railgun. It's pretty cool. You can uh, actually charge it up. It takes, I don't know maybe less than two seconds to charge. I, I, I could be wrong on that. It's, it's a short time to charge it, and you do higher damage when you charge it. But it's uh, kind of tricky because the projectiles aren't super fast like bullets. They're a little bit slower, so it does take some time to get used to. But it is powerful. And for Toby's talent, we have me and my mech, which is basically his mech suit, which you can upgrade as far as I know while you're leveling up. I don't think there are too many upgrades, unless there's a mutation skill that we don't have unlocked. Uh, I think there's only one actual upgrade, but it's there. So for Toby's first skill, we have Arc Mine, which launches a mine at whatever you're aiming at, to your target location. It's going to launch the mine, and when the mine gets there, an orb will appear around it. And any enemy who enters that orb is going to take damage. The orb lasts for 8 seconds, as does the mine. At the end of the 8 seconds, the mine explodes and will deal damage to any nearby enemies. For Toby's second skill, we have Force Field, which I actually think is probably his most important skill. And it's not for why you might think, you know, Force Field gives you a shield, which it does. As you can see, it blocks up to 850 enemy damage. But... I think the important thing is that when you have your shield up, you can shoot through it with your railgun and it will add velocity. It will increase the velocity of the railgun shots, which is really useful because they kind of move pretty slowly, so speeding up is speeding them up. Pretty nice. And there's a couple more benefits as you uh, level up your helix tree. And lastly, we have Toby's ultimate, Core Discharge. Now, when this is used, Toby just starts charging up his laser from his mech suit and will basically fire a giant laser in front of him for six seconds. Does a lot of damage. Pretty nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at Toby's Helix Tree. At level one, we have two skills which, you know, they buff different skills. And I feel like at level 1, at least for me, this is where I look at this and I say, okay, I'm going to go contingency plan, I'm going to go with a more arc mine based build. Or if I go me and my magnets, I have to go with a force field railgun build. So I feel like this is where your build really starts to take shape, which might sound silly because, you know, level 1, your build should start to take some sort of shape. But this is, I feel like these are very polarizing skills. But let's get into them. With contingency plan... Whenever we shoot Toby's arc mine as it's sitting on the ground with a railgun blast, it will explode, dealing damage to any enemies nearby. Now, this can be kind of tricky because you want to maximize your damage, so I guess the ideal thing to do would be to let your enemies sit in the uh, the arc mine nova or aura, whatever you want to call it, and then blow it up. But, you know, if you wait too long, maybe the enemy leaves. So I feel like this is kind of a tricky skill. Not It's not tricky, but... You want to get the timing right with this one, especially. I want to blow up the arc mine. And for Toby's second level one skill, we're going to have me and my magnets, which is a pretty nice skill. 
Anytime you fire your railgun through your force field, you get a 25% damage increase. So with this skill, you just want to set up your force field and just shoot whatever you can through it. And try your best to, you know, keep it in the force field. This is going to make Toby pretty passive, but I feel like he's already a pretty passive character with his abilities. You want to sit back and not get too close to your enemies, because if you do get jumped on, you're going to have a bad time. I feel like that's his biggest weakness, is any time uh, he gets jumped on, you're going to have a bad time. So at level 2, we're going to get two skills that buff force field. We're going to get starting line, and we're going to get best offense. So for the first skill, starting line, when we put down our force field and we pass through it or any allies pass through it, we'll get a 30% movement speed increase for a short period of time, which can be pretty nice if you're trying to maybe run away or close a gap on someone, throw your shield down, run through it, give you some movement speed. Along with boosters should allow you to catch up to people pretty quickly. And with best offense, we're going to get a little bit of health regen if we stand behind our force field. We get 14, which is pretty nice because you don't really have any other form of sustain. It's not a huge amount, but, you know, you'd have to sit behind it for a while to actually get back to full health if you're pretty low. We also get some attack speed too, which is nice, so we'll be able to fire our railgun a little bit more quickly. So at level 3, we're going to have two skills that don't buff... Toby's skills, quote-unquote, I guess. We have Targeting Overlay and Still Alive. Sorry. Now, Targeting Overlay is interesting when, when I've used it because I don't know if it actually works. I haven't noticed any significant differences when zooming in. And it says that it can, you know, reveal cloaked enemies, and I guess I haven't run into cloaked enemies, so maybe it's useful if you have someone who can go into stealth on the other team. But I haven't really noticed a benefit from this one. I don't know if it does anything when there are no stealth enemies. I've aimed on my sights and I know that enemies are usually pretty visible, so I don't see why you would need this. But if you guys do figure it out, please feel free to let me know because I, I sure as hell can't. And with Still Alive, sorry, we're going to get an increase to Toby's maximum shield strength. Now, I originally thought this was to his force field. It's not to his force field. The little icon in the circle, I think, means his mech suit. So me and my mech. You're actually getting it for your mech suit. So it's your, your shield capacity, not force field. You're getting a flat 240 increase to your shield capacity. No confusion. Unless I'm wrong. Then be confused. At level 4, we're going to get three skills that are going to buff Arc Mine. We're going to get uh, our two normal skills, and you'll see our first mutation skill as well. One of two that I currently have unlocked. So we'll go over it since we have it, and we'll go over the other one when we get there. So we'll go over Sorry I Broke Your Legs versus Sorry I Broke Your Wrists. And I feel like this will be more personal preference as to what you like. But... I'll just tell you what they are first. Sorry I Broke Your Legs is a skill that whenever any enemy is damaged by your arc mines, they're slowed for three seconds. And three seconds is a pretty decent amount of time. Sorry I Broke Your Wrists is very similar. It's a stun, but you have to hit the enemy directly with your arc mine, which I feel like can be harder than just having them damaged by the arc mine orb. You got a two second stun if you do hit them with Sorry I Broke Your Wrists. But I feel like Sorry I Broke Your Legs is a little better because you can slow more enemies rather than having to worry about hitting one enemy and then, you know, having other ones come rushing at you. So I definitely prefer the slow over the stun just because it's easier to land the slow. As for Arc Vortex, the mutation skill at this level, I found it rather unpredictable and I wasn't super impressed with it. I'd have times where enemies wouldn't get pulled towards the orb, and then I'd have other times where they'd get pulled towards the orb and threw it out the other side and be like five feet on the other side of the orb. So I say play around with this skill and try it out for yourself and see if you like it. At level five, you're gonna see our two normal skills and then our second mutation skill that we have unlocked. 
All these skills are going to buff boosters. Boosted boosters is going to give Toby an additional booster charge, bumping it up from 3 to 4. I feel like this is more of an offensive skill. It can be used defensively if you're trying to escape, but having that extra charge will help you get around the map a lot faster than something like Panic Mode. I feel Panic Mode is a very defensive skill. Panic Mode gives you damage reduction when you're out of booster charges, so if you're trying to escape and you're like on your last charge and then you use it, you have nothing, at least you get the damage reduction to kind of bail out, or as you bail out, I should say. So, that's kind of how I feel about these two. Boosted boosters, kind of more all-purpose, and panic mode is a very defensive skill. Now, with upward boost, instead of propelling yourself in a certain direction, you can propel yourself upward. And from what I have experienced, I think you could only do that if you're standing still. If you're holding you know, the forward button or the joystick forward, whatever, you're going to still boost forward. You can still boost in all four directions, but I don't think you can boost upwards if you're moving in a certain direction. I'm not sure on that. Uh, if, if I am wrong on that, please let me know. But I mean, I feel like this has really limited use compared to the other two. If you're trying to just jump up high on something, then it might help you out. But I feel the other two are a little better than Upward Boost, personally. At level 6, we're going to get two skills, one for each of our main skills. We're going to get Beam Splitter, and we're going to get Plasma Mine. So, Beam Splitter is by far one of my favorite skills on Toby. I love this skill. When you shoot a railgun projectile at your force field, it's going to ricochet into three, which each do the full damage. So this is good against, let's say, really big bosses, or if you have a large group of enemies, you can hit a bunch of things at once. Uh, I, I, I have really have a hard time passing up this skill. I'm not sure how good it would be versus, you know, say, one target where your beams split off and two of them miss the target. It probably wouldn't be, you know, it'd be kind of a waste in that respect. But if you're facing a lot of enemies, I think it's a glorious, glorious skill to have. And we have Plasma Mine, which is going to make our Arc Mines do 50% bonus damage to shields. Now, I don't see this skill being too good in PvE, because, again, a lot of enemies just don't have shields in PvE. There are some bigger ones that do. If you want to try and destroy their shield with this, go for it. But I feel like it's better suited for PvP when human players do have shields. So if I ever do use this, I'm probably going to keep it strictly to... PvP, because I, I just love Beam Splitter so much. That's really what it is. At level 7, we're going to get two skills that are going to buff Toby's Railgun. We're going to get Riding the Rail, which is going to decrease the time it takes to recharge the Railgun by 20%, which is pretty nice. We're also going to get Heart Piercer, which will uh, allow fully charged Railgun shots to penetrate pretty much everything. Walls, enemies, objects, whatever is in your way. As for which skill I like better, it's hard to say. Riding the rail I feel like is better against a single target where you can just keep unloading a fully charged shots because you can shoot them faster. Faster and faster when uh, you have the skill. And Heart Piercer is going to be better against multiple targets, you know, large groups of enemies where they kind of just sit on top of one another. The other thing with that is, you know, that it's not always going to happen. So I feel like what you pick here is really situational. I don't think it's going to make or break your build, but I don't know. I say experiment and see what you like. At level eight, we're going to get two skills that are going to buff force field. We're going to get room for improvement, which is going to enlarge the radius of force field by 50%. And we're also going to get Room for Mistakes, which is going to give double the health to Force Field. Now, for me, this is an obvious choice for what to take. I'm, you know, pretty much 10 out of 10 times going to take Room for Mistakes to give us more health on the Force Field. I mean, that's basically your defense and your offense to some extent because of uh, the other skills with your Railgun. 
you know, having your force field up longer is going to buff your railgun for longer, so I don't know how you could go against this. Like, me room for improvements probably somewhat situational, but, I mean, like I said, 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 times I'm taking room for mistakes. At level 9, we're going to get two skills that are going to buff arc mines. We're going to get what's mine is yours, which will increase the area of effect radius on arc mines. And we're also going to get primed catalyzers, which will increase arc mines base damage. Now, obviously, more damage is really nice, but me personally, I like having arc mines to slow people. And what's mine is yours, giving you a bigger area of effect radius, gives you a bigger area in which you can slow people so I really like having that utility it can be uh, really nice just to have a giant orb that's gonna slow anyone who touches it so I usually will pick that skill over primed catalyzers but I guess it really depends on the on the build that I take and lastly we have level 10 which is gonna give us again as level 10 always does, two skills that buff our ultimate. We have triple charge and we have endangering species. Now, triple charge, instead of the single laser that applies a damage over time that Toby has, normally with core discharge, it's going to fire three blasts, one after the other, that deal 250 damage per blast. Now, what I find interesting is that it does the same damage as Core Discharge normally does per second. So each blast does the same damage as Core Discharge before this does per second. So I don't really feel like it's uh, the best damage-wise overall. DPS, I guess you can make a case for it because it's all burst damage. The other issue with it, though, is that every shot's basically a skill shot. There's no room for error. You have to hit your shots, otherwise you're, you're doing nothing. With the regular core discharge, there is a lot of room for error. So, that's one reason I tend to stay away from this skill. Now, Endangering Species, on the other hand, I really like because, again, the utility with the slow is great. I mean, you can just drag your laser across the screen and slow whatever it hits. So, I have a hard time avoiding Endangering Species when I get to level 10. Now, I just want to share a couple final thoughts before I end the video. Now, keep in mind that I am playing this in early access, and I'm probably going to put out a couple more videos while things are still in early access. And things are going to change in this game. Like, there's no doubt that things are going to change. Just the way it has to be if there's going to be a competitive PvP. Things have to change, otherwise they're going to get very, very stale. And... You know, certain heroes would be way more overpowered than other ones, so... What you see in these videos is not always going to be the case in like a month or a year or whatever. I don't know, however long Gearbox decides to support this game. But I'm going to do my best to keep up with the updates as they happen. Another thing is that I mainly play in PvE, so a lot of the time I'm speculating about PvP. I haven't spent too much time playing PvP, but I, I do plan on it when uh, when the time comes, when the game is released and, you know, there's a lot of people online. So, But what I experience is, you know, just that. It's my own experience, so I could be very wrong on some of these things. I'm just calling it like I see it, but I hope you guys will experiment with the builds yourselves. Try, find what you like, find what you don't like. You know, if it's cool, it's okay if you disagree with me. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how you get diversity, and that's the beauty of this game, is there's just a lot of things you can do with a lot of different characters. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about Toby. Hope I was able to help instill a little bit of knowledge, even a tiny bit of knowledge about this character, because he's a, I think, a really, really fun character, and again, super duper adorable. As always, feel free to rate and or comment down below, guys. If you do so choose to, feel free to subscribe as well. And I will catch you in the next one.